Good morning. My name is Oda Lutz, and I work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the Education Office. And I have with me today my esteemed colleague, Leslie Lowe's, who also works in the Education Office at JPL. And we are here with you to talk about the Mission to Mars Student Challenge Summer Camp Edition. So this session is designed for educators during out of school time. So summer camp, after school, youth programs, whatever, whatever it is you're doing with young people that this would be helpful for you. Uh, this is the session during which we will talk about planning your mission. Last time we talked about uh, learning about Mars. First you learn about what you're gonna do and then next you plan your mission. So we have uh, polls that hopefully you were answering when you came in. And I'm gonna go ahead and show the results here. Looks like our grade levels are, are quite varied. This is wonderful, it's a wonderful spread. So everybody from the young, young kids all the way to our high schoolers, that's wonderful. And it looks like our, uh, our Programs are, uh, some of you are in person, some of you are virtual, and some of you are a hybrid, that's, that's great. Hopefully the things we have set up for you today will be able to be used by any of you. And as far as experience, um, wow, we've got a bunch of people who, it's a regular part of your program, that's wonderful. Some of you are just starting it, that's great. So cool, those of you who have uh, experience, feel free to, to chime in with uh, suggestions for other folks. Um, and then we just wanted to know how many of you had attended previous trainings. So cool that you have some of you. And if it's your first training, also cool. Um, we have our previous trainings recorded. In our previous trainings, we talked about, um, about Mars and the mission, the Perseverance mission and Ingenuity helicopter. We won't be talking in detail about those today because you could watch the recording. Um, but uh, just know that there have been a couple of things happened since the last time we talked. We've had a couple more helicopter flights. Uh, I encourage you to go to mars.nasa.gov to, um, to go ahead and, and see those. Uh, so to read about, read about our, our latest uh, events. So um, Leslie, what, what is the big idea of what we're doing here? Big idea of this whole Mission to Mars student challenge, um, especially for summer camps, is that um, we're going to lead students through designing and building a mission to Mars. And we've got, you know, activities and a plan and resources for, from NASA that can help you do that. And um, the URL I will type into, um, I guess, the Q&A <laughs> um, to or maybe Amelia can do that for me to figure it out um, on, on, for you to be able to um, see all the activities that are, that are in this challenge. Um, the goals of the challenge is that we would love to have students from around the country, all the 50 states, the territories, and anybody beyond um, to participate um, in this, especially this summer, because we know you guys are working on summer camps and we're really interested in reaching underserved communities. So if you work with youth who aren't um, normally engaged in STEM or who are traditionally underserved in STEM, that's fantastic. And if you have colleagues who um, are in that state, please let them know about this program. And of course, the other goal of this program is to be able to raise awareness about this teachable moment, really, that's going on with actual Mars exploration um, in the landing and exploring of Mars that's going on right now. And so it's exciting and relevant. Um, so to bring into summer camps, um, we'll give you access to these things, a guided seven week plan, um, which we're already into, um, for 
all ages, elementary, middle, high school age youth, and using high hands-on activities about Mars. And they include planning your mission, which is what we're going to cover today, um, launch and landing, and exploring the surface. I hope that last time you were able to join us about learning about Mars um, and how you can get your kids familiar with Mars, because that's a nice lead into what we're going to be talking about today. Another thing that, that you're gonna be getting that you're experiencing right now is a series of one hour webinars. Um, these will be going through next month uh, to show leaders, you know, yourselves, how to guide activities from each phase of, of this challenge. Cause we really want you to get in there, get, get your hands dirty, <laughs> get real familiar with how you're gonna lead these activities um, so that you can feel equipped to um, you know, do these with your kids in whatever format that you're thinking. Um, and then a, a cherry on top, lots of cherry on top for the summer is we're going to offer you a series of weekly um, Q and A's that your kids can ask questions of subject matter ex experts, some of which actually work on mission. So you'll get to hear directly um, interact with um, these um, engineers and scientists who are doing the operations and discovery on Mars right now. And that'll happen in June and July. Um, on the next slide, we actually have the schedule for you. Um, as um, I mentioned earlier, we are now in week two of the seven week series um, about planning your mission. And we've got the dates listed for you there on the, um, dates when we'll have subject matter experts available and that's all available on the main website um, for the trainings that um, hopefully we can post um, in in the chat somewhere it, yeah so that's terrific okay all right now these activities that we um, have designed for you and that we're going to show you we're orienting them so that all you need is a good dose of enthusiasm. Um, be crafty in how you want to present these. Um, we, there's some activities throughout this series that you know, we want you to be able to up and move and doing things. Um, the other prerequisite for you is that you wanna learn something that's super important because the enthusiasm and the interest you show will um, rub off on your kids and that'll make them wanna do it too. As much as possible, we try to use off-the-shelf materials. Um, but today, it's going to require at least some computer access and um, access to a printer. Um, and then, of course, always all the activities we do, we keep safety first and foremost. Okay, so I'll throw it over to Oda now to talk to you about what we're going to do today specifically. Thanks, Leslie. So we are really going to rock and roll today. Um, for those of you who are with us last time, we, we took a little bit of a leisurely approach. And today, you're going to need to buckle up and uh, go for a fun ride with us. So um, I am going to be trying to do some things with you virtually that uh, work both in person and virtually. And uh, we'll try to work with the technology we have. And uh, we'll be learning a bit together, see how this goes. Um, so what I want you to do is think back on what you've learned about Mars, uh, what you just generally know about Mars. Um, and if you were with us last time, what we learned about geologic features of Mars and atmospheres and such. And we're going to apply what we have learned and what we know to planning our mission this time. So um, for the younger set, I know we have quite a number of folks who have younger kids. Um, we're going to focus on kind of the big ideas. So our, how are we going to accomplish our exploration goals? What sort of tools will we use? And for the older kids, and, and even by older, I mean even grade three. So this is, um, I said three through five on my slide. I should have really said three through 12. Uh, we are going to do some detailed mission plannings, and we're going to have multiple constraints. For your younger grades, your, your maybe three, four, you, um, you would maybe do a portion of it and only give them a budget constraint. For your high school kids, we're going to have budget constraints, power constraints, mass constraints, all sorts of things. Uh, so you can make it as simple or as difficult for your students as you want. Just kind of flow with whatever works for 
your environment and for the level of interest and time that your students have. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna jump in here. Um, the first thing I'm gonna have you do is go to this link. Um, and I think we are, I'm gonna need to type this in. Leslie, do you not have access to the chat either? I think you should have access to the chat. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, we don't. I got it. You got it. Can you? Uh, as long as those that? guys can see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, everybody should be able to see that. So menti.com and uh, the rest of this link, I'm going to um, flip over to another window myself. And let's see if I can make this happen. I need to share my screen again. All right, so when you go to that Menti link, you should see this, uh, this question, what do you know about Mars? And if you didn't get that link, go to menti.com, uh, use the code 27144415. And the question is, what do you know about Mars? Now, I want you to answer this either what you personally know or how your students would respond. So some of you have younger kids, how would they respond? What do they know about Mars? So hopefully this is allowing you to enter some uh, answers and go ahead and, and submit some of those. Your students will have different levels of knowledge. Uh, we're not expecting them to know everything, um, but hopefully they have some ideas. So. Um, go ahead and enter what you know about Mars. And uh, Pamela, I see your question. You're, you're, you've raised your hand. Please go ahead and enter that in the Q&A and we'll go ahead and answer that. Um, so we wanna know what you know about Mars. And hopefully Minty is working for me this morning. I see we have a bunch of answers. Let's see if I can make it display. All right. What do we know about Mars? And it's it's Minty is being a little goofy with me this morning. It's not showing the uh, all right, we've got, it's red, it's named after the god of war, okay. So Menti is not cooperating with me this morning. This is, uh, of course, par for the course, right? <laughs> so let's Maybe see Maybe you can, can read, read. We see some of the answers you've got up there. Yeah, it's just not showing on my end, which is unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, let's try this one more time. Trying to uh, not hide results. Interesting. So you're seeing some of the... Uh, I thought the earlier, yeah, right there. Yeah, it, it actually, interestingly, it flipped to my next uh, slide, which, okay. So... Ah. It's, We'll just go with this. It's smaller than Earth. It's red because the crust has iron in it. Yep. It's red. It's a planet. It has frozen water. Yep. So you guys know lots of stuff. This is wonderful. Um, so it's our neighbor. Yes. We're exploring it with a rover. Yep. All right. So you have lots of knowledge. This is wonderful. Now, your students may or may not have that level of knowledge, but that's okay. Um, what uh, what we're going to do is talk about what we what we have with um, what we can do with the, the information the students have. Um, all right, let's go to sharing my screen again, and hopefully you can see my PowerPoint. Um, 
in our, with our early childhood and even some of our upper elementary grades, we often do something called a KWL chart where we ask folks, our, our kids, what do you know? And that's the K and that's what I just asked you. So those things would go in the first column. And then the next one would be, what do you want to know? And then later after we do some exploration, what have you learned? So we have a lesson called, what do you know about Mars? And this actually covers the K and the W. And so we ask students to brainstorm and, and you can do this online. Um, oftentimes if you have some sort of sharing document, whether it's a Google document or uh, any, any of the various apps that allow students to type in real time, you can do brainstorming about what they know and then also, what do they want to know about Mars? And I was gonna have you do that, the, the want to know portion, but we'll skip that because my mentee isn't working as well as I'd like this morning. Um, there are, if your students don't know much about Mars, that's perfectly fine. It's part of, the, part of the deal is they're supposed to be learning so they can watch, we have some videos. Um, we also have some um, grades three through five level reading so that your, your three through five grade students could read it yourself, themselves, or you as the educator could read to them. Our friends over at NASA Space Place have these kid-friendly articles on lots of space theme stuff. And in this case, they have an article called All About Mars that is really great. So as I mentioned, the second part is um, the, uh, what do you know about Mars or what do you want to know about Mars? So I want you to think about it, um, whether the mentee is working or not, Think about what do you want to know about Mars? What, what is it that you're like, hmm, what's going on out there? What do I want to know? And think about that. So it's really important to um, think about what you want to know. So then we can go out and learn those exact things. So I'm going to keep going here. Um, the next lesson we have today is on what tools would you take to Mars? So let's say that you have, um, all right, so Menti's waiting for me to show the slide. Yeah, let's just skip the Menti. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not giving me a, a good scene on my end. So um, let's go ahead and go to what tools would you take to Mars? So let's say you wanted to go exploring and find out something about the geology, or maybe you wanted to find out if there's water, or maybe you wanted to find out if there's life. Well, what tools would you take? Well, this is a pretty simple kind of a, a, a basic activity. It comes with a worksheet that you can either use online or in person. And the first part is what, what, how is your robot gonna move around Mars? So we're, we're planning on taking a lander. Do you wanna use legs? You wanna use wheels or tank treads, think of it yourself. So I want you to think to yourself, what, what would you choose? Would you choose legs? Would you choose wheels? Would you choose tank tracks? And by the way, there's no wrong answer. It's just whichever one you would like. Uh, they all have advantages and disadvantages. So put in your brain, whichever one you would like. And then I want you to think about tools. Now, some of your older students are gonna be familiar with these tools. They know what a magnifying glass is. They maybe know what a hammer is, a camera. Your younger students, some of them will know what some of those tools are, but you may have to explain and give an example of, of some of these things. You might bring in tweezers, bring in a brush, bring in uh, a scoop of some sort and talk about how these tools are used. And then have your students say, well, which one would you take to Mars? Um, and why? So the idea is they would, they would circle whichever one they wanna take, or maybe they wanna take more than one, and then <clears throat> explain wh which one they wanna use, so, or wh why they wanna use it. So if you wanna take a camera, what do you wanna take pictures of? Why would a camera help you on Mars? And same thing for a hammer, a magnifying glass, a drill, uh, notice our drill looks a little different than a household drill. And so it's, it's fun to talk about that. Um, and maybe your students wanna take something that isn't here. That's totally fine too. 
they can draw their tool in the little bubble and then explain, you know, give it a name and explain what they would use it for. For your students who have writing ability, you would have them, of course, write a sentence. And for the students who don't know how to write yet, you can just have them explain either to each other or to you. And it gets people, it gets the kids thinking about how they would accomplish their goals. If their goals are to, you know, look for water, you know, which one of these might help with that? Uh, if their goals are to look for life, which one of them might help with that? And again, it's not really about right and wrong answers. It's about having them explain themselves and justify their, uh, their choices. So, so that's kind of the, the basic for, for getting some ideas going for the younger students. Um, now here's where we're gonna get a little wild, okay? Uh, this is one of my favorite activities. It's a board game and it's called Mars Bound, Mission to the Red Planet. This board game was designed in, by folks who know how we design missions at JPL. So we have a mission design process and that mission design process involves having um, all sorts of people in the room who are experts in, in propulsion for designing a rocket, in, um, in scientific instruments, in mechanical systems. And you, generally when you're designing a mission, you have um, scientists who are really excited about what they're doing. They have all these scientific goals they want to accomplish, but of course we have a limited budget. So you have to keep your design within budget. And there are also these other constraints, like I mentioned earlier. So things like mass, you can't take an, un, an unlimited weight or mass to, to space because it, it gets expensive. Um, and so on the right here, you see uh, one of my colleagues with his students talking, doing this as a board game in person. Now, that big game mat you see is downloadable. Um, it's downloadable in large format PDF. You can see it, if you can read the tiny print over on the materials side, it's the, the second thing down. There's the equipment cards uh, are in a PDF, um, so you can download that. But the design mat comes in two different formats. If you are fortunate and you have one of these large format fancy printers, great, you can use that. If you were like me when I was teaching, you didn't have fancy printer, you had an eight and a half by 11 regular size paper printer, and that's, that's about it. Well, so for people like me, we have uh, the eight and a half by 11 tiles, the PDF. Um, and you can actually print it out and tape it together. It, it works just fine. Um, that's actually what I used to do. So um, Leslie has typed into the chat the uh, link for the cards if you want to go um, get the cards. You don't really need to do the HTTPS at the front if you don't want to. Um, you can just do the jpl.nasa.gov slash edu slash PDFs slash marsbound dash cards dot pdf. How's that for a crazy URL? Um, so if you're doing it in person, having the card game is really cool. Um, it is a little printer intensive, but um, you can reuse the decks and such. Now, um, the, we did have an educator in the Los Angeles area who liked this so much that during COVID wanted to still play this game and she created an online version for us. And I'm just so happy with that because I have always wanted an online version of Mars Bound. So you can see lower in the materials list that it says optional online edition. There are two things. One is a PowerPoint that you can download. We have the Google Slides version. Sometimes we've heard that sometimes people can get to the Google Slides version and sometimes they can't. If you can't, just download the PowerPoint and drag it over to your Google Drive. Uh, that works just fine. Um, and then we also have an Excel spreadsheet. So younger students, um, this is gonna take addition skills. They need to know how to add. So younger students, I would just have them use pencil and paper and add, practice their addition skills. Um, but older students, your high schoolers especially, who are learning how to create formulas in Excel, I would use the Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't have the formulas, they have to figure those out themselves, but it sets it up for them to keep track. 
Um, let me show you what the online version looks like here. Um, so this is the game board and all of the, uh, the cards are over to the left. And when, if you're not in uh, presenter mode, if you are just in um, regular PowerPoint mode, you, these, all these cards are movable and you can drag them around. They're, they're, um, they are color coded with you know, the matching uh, outline for the cards. So that's, uh, that's what we've been able to do. And all of these cards are, you're gonna have to make choices. So the red go for the launch system or the rocket. Uh, the orange is power. Um, purple is computer and so on and so forth. So there's all these different choices. So I am going to take us back into the PowerPoint show and hopefully you are ready to play. We're going to play and we're going to do a lot of polling to get answers or to get uh, consensus. So some of these slides, a lot of these slides from this point forward come from that downloadable PowerPoint and they are designed for students to see. So you're going to play the roles of scientists and engineers. And the question is, have you wanted to travel to Mars? Have you wondered what it takes to plan a mission? And today you are going to design a mission. So I hope you are ready to go. Yes. Before we move on, uh, I'd like to make a comment. Uh -huh. um, I want to reemphasize what Oda said earlier about the fact that this is how our um, mission design teams actually design missions and the kind of decisions they have to make um, when they're putting things together. It's very, very authentic. I happen to run a program where we bring graduate students on to do their own design missions. And even the use of a spreadsheet is, um, to make these kind of choices is exactly the kind of things that our actual teams are doing. So what's so cool about this is you are stepping into the same roles that these mission designers do. So that's another big plus is you're trying on their shoes and you're learning really how to do this. Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, that, it's a really good point to emphasize. This is not fabricated stuff. This is not like fantasy, whatever. This is like, this is really what we do. Now the numbers we had to make kind of simple, but so that's a little fabricated, but the process is the same. And, and, and you'll see as we get going here, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, so uh, I wanna talk to you about how the game's set up. You're gonna have $250 million, okay? Um, and you're gonna have to buy a rocket and pieces of the spacecraft and science instruments and so on and so forth. Um, and as I mentioned, if, you're, if you have younger students, maybe all you do is have them keep track of their budget. If you have older students, we're gonna keep track of a few other things that are interesting. Um, your goal is to get the most science return out of your mission. Now, trust me, this may not make sense right now, but it's gonna make sense in a minute. So going through some examples here. One of your, here's, a, here's one of your cards. Remember I said the red cards were for the launch vehicles or the rockets? I just grabbed one out of the stack. This is not the best one. This is not the worst one. This is just one I grabbed, okay? I wanna show you how these are set up. You see the little green dollar sign says $75. That means if you're gonna choose this rocket, which is named Light Lift Rocket 2, it's gonna cost you $75 million. Now keep in mind, you only have $250 million, but the, sometimes a launch vehicle is one of the more expensive parts of your, of your mission. This uh, launch vehicle can lift 90 mass units. Now we didn't do kilograms or tons or anything like that. Um, we just use this generic mass unit. It doesn't align with anything. It's just 90 mass units for the game. Um, each car gives you pros and cons. So pro of this is it can lift uh, medium-sized missions. And a con, a con is that it uh, costs more than a different rocket. And it says it's medium risk. It works four times out of six. <laughs> now, in real life, our rockets have better reliability than that. <laughs> but for the game, 
this, uh, that means it works four times out of six. That means uh, two times out of six, your rocket will fail on upon launch. So it does a pretty good job of lifting mass, but it's got a little bit of problem with risk. Um, also, I wanna warn you of something. There are a number of times during the game where we have uh, certain things that are required. So like you, you, you're you gonna pick your rocket, but it doesn't come with a nose cone. You have to get a nose cone. There's only one option for nose cone. It costs $10 million. So you're gonna be buying this nose cone with whatever rocket you get. Um, I want you to notice though on the card, see where it says the $10, that's the $10 million. Right below that, there's a seven and a little, looks like a little block weight. That is how much it weighs. So how much mass it is, it's seven mass units. Remember on the rocket, there were 90 mass units that it could lift. Well, with the, once you get the nose cone on there, you're gonna have, you're only gonna have uh, 90 minus seven. So 83 mass units left for the rest of your, of your instruments. Um, the little lightning rod tells you how much power it use, uses. Well, the nose cone doesn't use any power, so no worries there. Um, next thing you're gonna have to decide on is power, uh, power system. So do you want solar or do you want something else? And again, this is just something I grabbed out of the pile. I, this is, I'm not telling you this is what you should do. This is just an example card. I wanna show you what it looks like. Um, there are several solar panel options. This one costs $10 million, weighs seven mass units, and only provides 10 power uh, units. So now we're having to keep track of power. You see how it gets, it's getting more complicated? So younger students, again, maybe you only stick with budget, but your older students are gonna have to start thinking about mass. So this light lift rocket, it, it was 90 mass units. The rock, the nose cone took seven of those. And if you take this solar panel, it's gonna take seven. So you're, you're already whittling away at your mass limit. And the power, none of these other things take power, but some of the next cards are gonna have some power, um, some power requirements. So this, uh, the pros and cons know that it's gotta, you have to have some sunlight, it's gonna last a few years and it's not that heavy. Um, but it also requires a battery. So we will have to make sure we take the battery with us, which is also gonna cost money and mass. You know the story. Um, we are going to make sure we have an onboard computer. There are a couple of microprocessors to, um, to take. You can take a standard one or I forget what the other one is, a fancy one. Uh, they cost money, they have mass units. And then you see here, this one <clears throat> has a little, uh, a one next to the lightning bolt showing that it's taking one of your power uh, units. So the, if you took the solar panel, it has 10 power units, but the microprocessor is gonna take one of those. So now you're gonna only have nine left to work with, okay? Um, now you are gonna be, you, you're gonna have some options whether you can, you can choose among uh, different types of missions. If you choose something that's going to land, a lander or a rover, you are gonna to have to have a landing system. So uh, a parachute and a back shell are, are things that are required. Um, now these are, um, are, are required, but in this case, they cost a little money, weigh some, uh, some mass, but they don't require uh, any power. So that's a good thing. Next, we have mechanical systems. Again, if you've chosen a lander or a rover, maybe you want a robotic arm and it's gonna cost you, in this case, $5 million. It's heavy, it's got eight mass units. It takes one power unit, but see that star? That's your science return. So it gives you a science point and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to maximize the science points. So you're like, oh, okay, well, I don't wanna waste all that mass, but oh man, it gives me a science point and that's what I'm after. So maybe you would do that and we'll keep track of the science points. Um, you'll need to talk about uh, communications. So here's a high gain antenna costing $10 million weighing one mass unit. It's taking five power units, but it gives you one 
science return. So um, I think we're still within budget if these were the things we had chosen, but keep an eye on your power. If we took that low solar panel, you've got 10 power units, minus one for this processor, so now you're done to nine, minus two for the robotic arm, or minus another one for robotic arms, so now you're done to eight. And then if you take the high gain antenna and you have five more, you're now down to three power units. So you're getting close on power. So you see how you kind of have to negotiate and balance here. Um, if you have a rover, you're gonna to have to decide how it's gonna get around, just like in the previous activity for, for your young kids. Is it gonna use wheels, tracks, whatever? Um, and then we get to the fun stuff. You wanna, the whole idea here is to do science, right? So if your whole idea is to do science, we have to take science instruments and we have a lot of options for science instruments. We have lots of different cameras. Of course, they cost money. They weigh mass, they take power, but you see that ever elusive star, it gives you science return and that's what you want. You want the most science return. Um, there are again, some more of these kind of hidden costs. If you take the life sciences laboratory, check out that science return. So you get like two science return, that's awesome. But you also see in red, it says requires sample collection device. So that's gonna cost you money. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's not easy, not easy making decisions. All right, so you, uh, you guys ready to go here? We're gonna play this game. If you have questions during the time, of course, put them in the Q and A. Um, my colleagues, Amelia and Joyce will be able to answer those for you. If they have a question that they would like, uh, us all to hear, then um, we'll go ahead and answer that on air. So someone is asking, uh, Odo, why can't we choose two solar panels instead of one? Hmm. Well, it, when you talk about taking a solar panel, um, you aren't just talking about taking one, you were talking about taking a solar panel unit. So um, if you have a familiarity with solar panels, you know that they come in different wattages. Oftentimes that has to do with the number of individual cells and the size of the panel. Um, but you'll, you'll see that in, within this game, it, we have uh, fixed choices. So we have some low wattage solar panels, we have some higher wattage solar panels. And so it's a matter of a solar panel system, okay? Um, and you'll see that you have some options. So good question. All right, so first thing, we're gonna have to decide Okay, whether we take, whether we, what kind of mission we do. So you're gonna have several choices. First option is a flyby. A flyby mission does not land. It does not go into orbit. It just zips by the planet and takes images, takes uh, remote sensing readings. And it has basically one chance as it's going flying by. There's some advantages in that this is uh, one of the things that we send out first to do exploration because it's low cost and we can get some really good information about the planetary system. So option one is a flyby. Option two is an orbiter. So maybe you wanna go in orbit. You wanna circle the globe and take as much data over time as you can. So you can get all kinds of information over and over and over uh, about the planet from, from space. Next type is either a lander or a rover. Um, as sounds like a lander lands on the surface, a rover also lands on the surface. The difference between the two is a lander is stationary. It may have a robotic arm as you see in the image in the middle of the um, InSight lander. It has a robotic arm. Or if you have um, rovers, wheels, tracks, even legs, <laughs> whatever, whatever you like. So. Those are your choices. And I'm gonna pop up a poll that gives you an option of whether you wanna take a flyby, an orbiter, a lander, or a rover. So please vote. Would you like to take a flyby where you just zip on past, but it's inexpensive and you can get some really good deals? I sound like a used car salesman, don't I? <laughs> um, or you do want to take an orbiter where you can, you can observe over and over and over again from space and get some really great 
information. Oh man, you guys are, you guys are our money spenders, aren't you? <laughs> Check this out. These people want to go. Wow. Okay. So we've got, we've got some, a few people on the, on the conservative side that want to want to fly by our orbiter. Looks like the biggest group wants to take a rover. Okay. You people are living on the wild side. I like it. If I could just mention one thing that um, might determine, you know, I'm glad we went with this choice. Um, Part of the reason that NASA will sometimes choose the um, orbiting satellites um, is that you can get ideas about what the whole planet looks like or a large swath of the planet if you're constantly visiting like Oda said and going around and around and um, you know getting to see maybe how it changes and you see all different parts of the um, of the planet whereas with the lander you've picked where you want to go and you know how far you can go from that spot so that's the reason that sometimes uh, we pick the orbiters yeah, good point. And our orbiters too can uh, be um, relays, right. communications relays for our, right. for our landers and rovers. So, uh, all right. So you guys said rover, we're going with rover. Now, Leslie is going to be keeping track of what we, what we choose. So Leslie's making mental note that we're taking a rover. Um, now, next, we need to decide on our rocket. Now, I want you to take a look at the options here. These are all your options. Um, And you can can hopefully read the cards. They go up in price. They go up in the amount of mass they can lift. Remember, you only have $250 million. So if you're going for one of those uh, expensive rockets, that's going to be less equipment you can take on on your mission. So it's kind of striking a balance here and pay attention to reliability, the medium risk or the high risk or the low risk. And now I'm gonna put up a poll um, and I'd like you to tell me which rocket we should take. Should we take the light lift rocket one, the light lift rocket two, medium A or B or heavy lift? Um, Take a minute here, make sure you're, you're looking at the cards and see what we can take. And remember, Leslie, when, when we have everyone's decision, you're, we're going to record on our spreadsheet. Leslie has a spreadsheet she's using. She's gonna record the rocket and also the nose cone. So the, um, it's important to make sure that you have, you don't forget about the nose cone. Your rocket will not be very, very aerodynamic without the nose cone. And in addition, a lot of times that's where the payload goes. Your actual spacecraft that you're sending to the, the planet, um, it resides inside that cone and is protected. Yep, that's right. All right, so it was a pretty heated uh, <laughs> of argument over here. Now in, in your classrooms, or in your, in your youth groups, what we would have you doing, the kids would be in groups. So between three and five students, and they would be arguing amongst themselves and not just arguing, hey, I want this rocket, but why? And, and that's a really important skill to use um, justification. Why would you want to use a particular rocket? Um, so you've chosen medium lift rocket A. If we had more time, I'd ask you for reasoning, but, uh, Hopefully in your mind, you have reasons for the choices you made. So Leslie right now is entering medium lift rocket A on the spreadsheet. Now, Leslie, would you like to show us what you're doing? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. So Leslie, you can share your, um, your screen that shows us the spreadsheet you're working on. And remember folks, the spreadsheet was downloadable from our website. So Leslie has done some fancy formulas here because Leslie's a math person. <laughs> and so tell us what's going on here, Leslie. So what this spreadsheet does is allow you to keep track of the cost of things, um, how heavy they are in the mass com- column and the, um, how much power they use. 
And depending upon what power system you guys choose, we're going to be watching the power um, that your instruments and the other parts of your spacecraft use um, versus how much power you have available. So that's one of the things that we're gonna be balancing. Um, now, we also know how much mass units that your launch vehicle can um, carry. So I'll be entering the that limit here. If somebody wants to tell me what it is, um, Oda, maybe you can tell me and I'll fill in how much mass we've got to work with. Okay. There's also some concern in the Q&A. We picked a rocket, but do we have a nose cone? Not oh. yet. Still working. <laughs> I will put that in. Good. So your mass limit on medium lift rocket A is 125. 125. Yes. So that okay. means that's going to be our, our limit of how much mass or, you know, if we were on a scale on Earth, weight is what we're talking about, but it's really mass because it's in space. Um, that's, that's what we've got to work with here. All right. And um, as someone mentioned, we need to make sure that nose cone gets in there. Right. We will do that. I have a little cheat sheet off to the side here. That costs us 10. All right, so this is what we're up to. All right, so we have $140 million left to spend and 125 mass units to, to occupy. All right. So um, I noticed in our in our poll, medium lift rocket A and B were really close in a kind of a neck and neck competition. And um, medium lift rocket A and B are very similar, but uh, A has a um, A has a little bit of reliability. B lifts a little more mass. And so again, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's a matter of what uh, what decisions you make at the time, and it's negotiable. So you could go back and change your mind later. So it looks like Leslie has put in um, her, her, the mass of the nose cone. I think your formula might be a little off on your, at the bottom there, because we should be subtracting your 120. I will points. fix that. Thank you. Yep. Sure thing. And if you'll stop sharing your screen, I'll go back to the PowerPoint and um, we can get on with it. So hopefully you are having a good time with this, it's gonna get even more fun momentarily. So we have a rocket, we have a nose cone. Next, we need a power system. So question is, do you want a low power solar panel? Do you want a medium power solar panel, which costs a little more, weighs a little more, but gives you lots more power? Do you want a high power solar panel? Keep in mind, they say it requires onboard battery card number 10 for any of those. And that's the one in the lower left. You just automatically add $5 million, five mass units, and subtract five power units if you're going to go with solar, because you have to take one of those top three plus the onboard battery. Or maybe you want a fuel cell. Those are interesting. They don't um, uh, last as long, but they give you some uh, really good power, and it doesn't require the sun. Or do you want what we call an RTG, and a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, the bottom right? It's pricey, it weighs some stuff, but it, uh, it has uh, a lot of power. So I'm gonna give you the opportunity to um, vote on a power system here. You would give me a quick answer. You want a low power solar panel, medium power solar panel, high power solar panel, or a fuel cell. Oh wait, I didn't put RTG on there. Oh no, oh no, I didn't put RTG. Oh well, you'll have to forgive me. We're going fuel cell or, or, or solar panel today. <laughs> I guess I was typing too quickly. All right. We are going with a high powered solar panel with 42% of the vote. So Leslie, high power solar panel, $25 million. It weighs 20 mass units and 
you have 40, uh, 40, it gives you 40 power units. But Leslie, don't forget, they chose solar panels, so you gotta take an onboard battery. So make sure you grab the onboard battery to go with that. Yeah, got it. Okay, all right, next. This, this one is gonna have uh, two poles. So the top, the purple is the computer system. Now I wanna draw your eye to the right hand side first where it says main bus, because that's required for all missions. The main bus is kind of the body of the spacecraft. It is what holds all the science tools and it holds the computer. So you have to take it. So Leslie's gonna be adding the main bus. So that's gonna cost you $20 million, five mass units and one power unit. But you have to choose between a standard microprocessor and an advanced microprocessor. And you get to choose one of those. Please vote. Do you want the cheaper one? Or do you want the more expensive one? Um, that more expensive one's attractive because it gives you a, a science star, but boy, is that expensive. It's twice the price. It takes twice the power. Oh, I don't know if we can afford it. Well, apparently you all think we can. You guys are big spenders. I like it. All right, Leslie, they're going for advanced microprocessor. They want that science point. They are okay with the $10 million expenditure. So advanced microprocessor it is. Okay, next on the bottom of the, sh of the slide, we have to do an, our communications. Again, I'm gonna draw your eye to the bottom right. Um, we have a requirement that um, our, we have to have a memory card. So you're taking a memory card. It's gonna cost you $5 million, it's gonna cost you one mass unit and three power units. Oh, that's a, that's a power hog. Now, communications, do you want a high gain antenna or a low gain antenna? Your high gain antenna, you see it's twice the price, about the same mass, but oof, it takes power and, uh, but it, it's gonna give you a science return. So what do you go with? A uh, high gain antenna or a low gain antenna? See what people say, oh goodness, it's neck and neck. It's back and forth. I wish you guys could see it, it's pretty fun. And the high gain antenna wins. All right, I see the personalities we're dealing with. We've got big spenders out there. People want the science return. They want the high gain antenna. We're good. So Leslie, hopefully you're adding in that high gain antenna. Um, Leslie, budget-wise, are we doing okay? We have, we have big- We're getting here. really, really close. I'm catching up. Okay. Um, I will give you an update when I've got the high gain antenna and the advanced microprocessor entered. Okay. We'll give you an update shortly. All right. So um, now we're doing this faster than you would do in the classroom obviously, because we're trying to fit this all into a little short hour, which I'm not sure we're going to make it. We may go over. Um, but uh, your, your students would have more of an opportunity to negotiate and, and trade off. And also, we're not going to go back and make any changes. But in, in your classroom, you'd be, they'd be able to do that. So, Leslie, interrupt me whenever you have a balance for us. So the next thing since you all decided we're going to take a rover, um, we need to know if we're gonna take any of this hardware. So the yellow at the top is um, whether you wanna take a robotic arm, a rock drill, or a rotating instrument mount. Now, it's gonna be important we have a, a, a kind of know where we are budget-wise, whether or not we can take this hardware. It's not expensive. Each of them is $5 million. But um, Leslie, do you have a ballpark budget for us? I am ready to tell you your budget. You, okay. out of the $250 million that you were allocated, you have $70 million remaining. Okay, $70 million. Do you want to spend your money on 
any of these things. Now you don't have to take these things, but you could take all of them. This is one of those things you can, you can choose more than one if you'd like. Um, robotic arm, a rock drill, rotating instrument mount. So we could take them all. You could take two of them. You could take one of them. You could take none of them. All right, so I'm gonna end our poll here. Here are our results. Looks like we've got, we're definitely taking robotic arm. Um, so we're gonna spend 5 million of the 70 million we have left, but we're gonna get some science return. We might take a rock drill. We might take rotating instrument mount. Um, let's go ahead and take the rock drill, Leslie. Um, we'll just give, give an example of you can take more than one thing. Very good. So, and this is the mechanical section, Oda? Yeah, mechanical section. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So in real life, again, you would you would negotiate this stuff. So next, um, again, you said we're going with a rover. So do you want wheels or tracks? Notice there are pros and cons to both. Um, they cost the same. One of them weighs more. One of them weigh, takes more power, but has mobility advantages. So what do we want? All right, looks like we are getting a winner. Looks like wheels have won. So we're taking wheels. All right, these guys are big spenders on, on power and mass. Hope we're gonna be okay. All right, next. Again, you chose a rover, so you've got to land this puppy. Um, requirement for landing, you have to take a heat shield and you have to take a hypersonic parachute. So Leslie's gonna deduct those from your, um, from your money, from your mass, but they don't take any power, so that's good. So your choice now is whether you want to land using retro rockets, so these rockets that will slow you down and you can kind of control your landing. Or if you want to use airbags, which can protect you from sharp rocks and uh, bounce you around so you land not on a slope and land on a flat spot. Or if you want to um, put an impact probe down. So let's take a look. Okay, actually what I'm gonna do here first is I'm just gonna have you choose between retro rockets and airbags. So if you want to, Choose whether you want retro rockets or airbags. That would be lovely. I'll have you vote on the probe in a moment. So retro rockets or airbags, going once, going twice. All right, this one's not even terribly close. So I'm gonna go ahead and end. We've got retro rockets for the win. So Leslie, we've got a heat shield, a parachute, and retro rockets. You have to add all three of those into the spreadsheet. So, boy, we're whittling away at our $70 million, I think. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop sharing that. Now that um, impact probe, do you wanna use an impact probe or not? Now this is, this is, uh, this is gonna be a yes or no question. Um, and Leslie, I know we're moving awfully fast. Do you know, uh, ballpark where we are budget wise. Uh, you, you're not negative, but you're getting close. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> remember, we're going to have to put science instruments on, and those are going to take some power and they're going to cost some money. In addition to landing on the surface, do you want to impact the surface? So the, the question, yes or no. Um, so it's neck and neck. All right. And we're going with no. So we don't have to worry about the impact probe right now. So no impact probe, no problem. All right, next, time for fun. Okay, Leslie, um, I'm gonna be asking you in a moment where we are on budget mass and power if you have those but i'm going to talk i'm give me a few minutes <laughs> yep, yep you got it <laughs> i'm typing fast and furious but i'm catching yep. up gotcha okay so i have two slides here of um science instruments 
So you're going to be able to choose as many as you want, but we're going to have to stay within the budget and our mass limits and power limits. So do you want to take a camera? If so, do you want it to be low resolution, medium resolution, high resolution, infrared? I mean, you have all these choices. Look at the price tag differences. Um, look at the mass differences. Look at the power differences. And also notice that they all give you one science point. So there's a little bit of strategy here. You may be thinking, I want the highest resolution camera I can take because that'd be so cool. Also, the low resolution camera is going to give you the same science point in this game. Okay, not necessarily in real life, but in this game. Um, you also could take um, a spectrometer if you'd like. Uh, would you like an infrared spectrometer um, or a high energy spectrometer? A spectrometer can um, use, it uses uh, what we call spectral analysis and it's a kind of some chemistry to determine what something is made of, to determine what rocks are made of, to determine what the, the dirt is made of, uh, what atmosphere is made of, so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna go on to the next slide and show you some more science instruments. These are the last science instruments you can choose from. Do you wanna sense the radiation on the surface? Uh, someday we're gonna be taking humans to Mars. Uh, it would be nice to know what the radiation environment is so that uh, we know how to properly protect our humans from that radiation. Uh, a lot of folks are interested in whether or not there was microbial life on Mars. Well, you're gonna to need to take a life sciences laboratory to determine that. Notice how cool that is. It gives you two science points, but it's really expensive. <laughs> I don't know if we can afford $60 million. In addition to that, you have to take with you the sample collection device, which is another $5 million. I'm gonna say we probably can't afford that since I know our last balance was 70 million and we've spent some since then. So also, do you want a laser topography mapper? Do you want a color stereo camera? Uh, do you want wind sensors, atmosphere and wind sensors, a little weather station? Do you want a magnetometer? You can determine the magnetic field of Mars. So before I pull up the poll, Leslie, talk to me about budget. Do we have a budget yet? We do. Um, out of $250 million, we have spent $225 million, leaving us with $25 million. Okay, if we only have $25 million, I'm gonna tell you that you cannot have a life sciences laboratory. You cannot have a laser topography mapper. Now this is the last thing that we're taking with us is the, are the science instruments. So you can blow your budget here. Um, Leslie, do you know how we are on power? Yes, we have nine power units left. Okay, nine power units, that's, that has, we're in good shape. Wow, power-wise, we are in real good shape because notice most of these don't take a ton of power. Some of them, like your high energy spectrometer takes some power. Um, how about uh, uh, mass? Are we doing okay on mass? We are, we have 39 mass units left. Oh boy, we've got all kinds of mass. All right, so what I'm gonna have you do is vote on which of these you would like to take with you. And I know it's kind of tricky because I can't show all the slides or both slides at once. So I'm gonna keep this one up and then I'll flip to the other one momentarily. And you can uh, see what you can have here. Some of these things are expensive. Some of them are inexpensive. Almost all of them give you at least one science point. You've got a reminder that you've got to leave room for the bag of potatoes for Matt Damon. <laughs> yes, don't forget your potatoes. <laughs> that's funny. Good point. <laughs> and that's from the movie The Martian, for those of you who may not get the reference. Yeah. <laughs> or the book. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, we're going to end this poll and share results. Let's see what we've got. Um, Okay, it looks like the highest percentage of people asked for atmospheric and wind sensors. So Leslie, um, that's gonna take $5 million, two mass units of which we have plenty, two power units of which we sort of have plenty, and it's gonna give us one science return. Um, the next most popular thing looks like was a low resolution camera. 
So let's see, the low resolution camera costs $10 million, takes one mass unit, takes one power unit, and gives us one science return. So I think we still have money if, I, if my mental math is doing well. Oh yeah, tied for with the low resolution camera was the magnetometer. So I do like a magnetometer. Glad you voted for that. We're gonna go ahead and take the, uh, the magnetometer. And I think we might have room for another thing. Let's see, I see infrared camera at 28%. And of course I'm asking a lot of Leslie to keep up with all this. It, like I said, this is one of those things that um, it's, it's easier to do when you have a little more time. Whoops, back, back a little bit. Infrared cameras, $25 million. Boy, Leslie, do we have, do we have room for that infrared camera at $25 million? Room in our budget? I know we have mass room because we've got lots of mass units to spend. Um, at and this point, at this moment, with the wind instrument, the low resolution camera and the magnetometer, we have $5 million left. Okay, so we're not taking the infrared camera. The next one down looks to be the radiation sensor. All right, let's see what I can, uh, what was that? What was the cost of that radiation sensor? 15 million, sorry, no go. Um, let's see. The only $5 million instrument remaining is a sample collection device. Ah, uh, okay. And that came along with the life sciences laboratory, so we're not going to take it. So we're going to stop right there. We have a little bit money of money left in our budget, but um, let's see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sorry, I didn't share the results with y'all on that poll. Um, here they are. The we, I think we stayed within our math limit. We're okay there. We stayed within our power limit, I believe. Yes. Okay. How are we on sample or a science, science return? Yeah. We have seven science return points. Whoa, you guys, that's great. That's really good, especially for such a quick, quick game. Um, so as I mentioned before, yeah, as I mentioned before, you, um, you can have this, uh, you can have this game, whoops. You can have this game board and you can drag these over. I'm not gonna do that right now because uh, we're running short on time, but you can drag them over and play back and forth, go, oh, I don't want this, I want that. You could swap out your rocket if you decided that you made a bad choice, so on and so forth. Um, the idea again is to maximize science return. Um, science return of seven is really good. Um, there are some wild cards in the deck. After kids have, have worked on this for a while, we have um, these wild cards. So you roll a die and something happens. So like, let's say I roll a die and I get a two. That means it's like, yay, spinoff in communications. Somebody out there was able to use your technology for a commercial development and you get $35 million to add to your research. So you could go back and increase your, your $250 million budget by $35 million add more science, do all kinds of good stuff. But if I rolled a five or a six or a four, you just got a budget cut for some reason. Uh, either it was a congressional budget cut or a system failure, a rocket failure, something of the sort. And, and it happens in it real does life. Happen. <laughs> and then you have to go back and rethink your mission. It's kind of, kind of, kind of uh, a, a harrowing time. Uh, so now, um, Leslie, the reliability on that rocket, I think was four out of six. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where we launch our mission. And again, we, we used a, a die if you roll a die. So um, but this is really fun. It might, it might make your younger children cry. So maybe you wouldn't want to do it with them, but with the older kids, it's fun. Um, it's time to launch. So you've designed your mission. Let's launch and see who survives launch. Um, so you've got all these groups in the room or online and you roll a die or there's online die rollers. Um, if you get a one in, in our case, since it worked four times out of six, if you get a one, two, three, or four, your launch is successful. If it comes up a five or a six <laughs> bummer, you exploded on the launch pad or you failed at some point. 
So if we roll a die, um, you guys can't really see my die rolling. So I let's say we roll a three and yeah. voila, we're successful. We're headed to Mars. The team jumps up and down and celebrates. Um, we, we hope for a one, two, three, or four. So uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a fun way to, to wrap up the game, whether or not you're on your way to Mars or not. Especially since um, in the, the next couple of uh, weeks, we're gonna be designing our spacecraft and launching physically. So uh, it's kind of a fun thing to go along with that. So we're a little over time, but thank you for hanging in. I want you to note that we went through a couple of lessons. There are more lessons on the challenge page for different grade levels. Feel free to check those out. Um, Leslie, you have a blog. I have a blog and I'm going to type it in um, to the um, chat here in a minute. But um, if you want to get familiar with other things that are happening in space over time, um, a couple times a year, I write a blog piece on activities that um, you can use to bring actual space exploration or topics that are uh, current into your programs. So you can stay tuned that way as well. Great. Right, uh, th there's a question um, from Tish in the Q&A. She's interested in presenting this game the same way you did just now. And I know that you said it was very rushed, but maybe you could just give a few overview of how you did the interaction. Yeah, so because I was using Zoom, I had polls and that was handy. Um, you saw that my, my mentee didn't work very well, but uh, the polls were working well. Um, the, the interactive, uh, the, the game board where you can drag and drop is downloadable from the Marsbound uh, uh, page. So it's downloadable. I, I downloaded it as PowerPoint because it wouldn't, it's, it's really funny, if it, depending on which Google account I was in, it wouldn't always download properly to my Google Slides. So I downloaded to PowerPoint and then I just ran it out of PowerPoint for you today. Uh, but you can run it in Google Slides. Um, if you do it with a group, like you work at a, a museum, an observatory or wherever, or, or even if you have kids on, online, even if you're a youth group, you can put them in breakout sessions in Zoom and you can set up a different URL in your Google Slides that has, those, uh, that has a game board you could duplicate the game board into several different Google Slides locations and call it, you know, team one, team two, team three, and then set them after it. They could just do it themselves and then come back and report like in breakout rooms. But if you do it like I did it, I just did, um, I, I made sure I had Leslie doing the hard part, which was the math and, and keeping up with our speedy uh, decisions. And um, then I would just, just did it with polls. Uh, so all of those slides that you saw with all the, the cards are downloadable from our, from our website. So hopefully that will help you, Tish. Uh, let, um, Amelia, you wanna talk to us a little bit about the Museum and Informal Education Alliance? Sure, yeah, hopefully many of the people on this call are already members. Um, this is designed for informal educators. So all of you uh, camp leaders and educators that are on the call today, it's not just for the general public though. Um, we know that there's a lot going on at NASA yeah. and we wanna be able to help you find the resources you need for your camps, your museums, what have you. So it is free to join the My Alliance and we will keep you up to date with um, what is happening. And there is the little link right there. Awesome. The Museum and Informal Education Alliance, y'all, is amazing. Uh, Amelia's team does all this super cool, these super cool, uh, she said briefings. At, yeah, you can tune in. And, and if you don't tune in live, you can you can catch the recording. They're, they really keep you up to date on everything that's going on in NASA. Uh, so it's, it's really, really worth your time. Um, and it's, of course, free to join. Um, and when Otis says team, she means two of us. So if you do sign up, um, <laughs> give us a minute to uh, approve your signing up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just like everything else in JPL education, we, we say team as if it's hundreds of us. It's like a handful <laughs> or half a handful. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we're really happy to have you join. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff and, and I don't think there's any, really, any real drawback to it. Uh, if you get tired of the newsletter, just unsubscribe. Um, question in the chat was how many days is the challenge? Um, 
it is a, we designed it as a seven week program, but that of course is not seven weeks, seven days, 24 hours a day. Um, it's, it can be, it, you can do as little or as much as you want. If you want to do it as a one week camp, it'll fit in the one week camp. If you want to do it as a, a, a two day thing, that's fine. If you only want to do one day thing, that's fine. Just take whatever you like um, and go ahead and, and just customize it. That's the idea. So I wanna thank you for joining us today. I, we went over time a little bit, but I see a lot of you really stuck with us and I really appreciate that. Um, thanks for playing along with the game. This was the first time I tried it that way and I hope it was fun for you. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and take some questions in a bit of, you're from after we stop the recording. So if you want to stay on, feel free to do that. Um, but again, thank you. Uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording if I can. And feel free to, to pop some more questions in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them. <laughs>